Hello IL2 skinners and new people to skinning, aspiring skinners, etc. Today we're going to go over how to use the new Falk Wolf 190 D9 skin factory template that I'm releasing. It's a modification of uh, ICDP's template. Uh, the only thing I kept were the uh, national insignias and the weathering. Everything else I've completely redone, reworked, and reordered. Um, I left the uh, the faux hawk and Kreutz in there for you guys to use as well. You, can, you can't really see it because the black uh, he uses is different than the one that I use. Uh, but you can turn on the full one if you want to. But let's go down the line. I made this template much like I did my work instructions when I was a manufacturing engineer planner at Boeing. So we have things called installation requirements modules, assemblies, sub-assemblies, and part details. Part details are just one single thing without anything else applied to it. Some people argue that once you paint something, it's an assembly, but that's an argument that I'll never end. If you're in the aviation industry, then you know what I mean. Anyway, moving on down, let's go to the uh, reference and alignment IRM. And these are all the, uh, well, these are details here, which make up an assembly, which can actually equal one IRM. You could do it that way, too. I've noticed that whenever I saw airplanes being built or engineered. You could probably hear my dogs fighting behind you guys. Um, anyway, moving along, the wireframe, I changed the blend mode on it to make it uh, black lines because it's easier for me. I don't know about you guys to do work because the white ones, they seem to be, they show up thicker for some reason. It just looks odd to me. Uh, next, moving on down, we have this locator matrix I made up. I made this in Adobe Illustrator, which is why it's so crisp. Um, yeah, the numbers are almost all the same in all these, except they change in color. Like you, right, right here, you have magenta black 71, and then you'll have magenta yellow 71. And then down here, you'll have magenta green 71. Same thing with all the other colors, like red green, and then there's red yellow. All oh, these dogs are killing me. Anyway, just to help you locate something, so when you, uh, you open it up in the skin viewer, you just put your finger on that number on your screen, and then you just come over and turn it off. And then wherever your finger is pointing on the uh, template, that's where your part is that you're looking for. Additionally, these um, do not need to be on right here. These are just uh, they're just reference areas. So, like, say you only wanted to paint the hood or the canopy area, you would just you just control click it. And then come down to your layer that you're painting on, and and you can just run your brush all over it, and not worry about affecting all the other parts, which is the one thing that that bothers me in a lot of the templates. I'm not knocking ICDP at all; he does an amazing job, and I thank him for his services. Otherwise, we wouldn't even have these. Um, so thank you if you're watching, man. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I just wanted to make this more uh, friendly to to newer skinners. I know us vets have been around like. We know how to get around all that. It just takes time, but we, we do it. And you just move on down the line. Like, you just want to... So the fuel slosh is just the areas where the camo would appear. It's not everywhere on the plane. I even separated the horizontal stabilizers um, just where the camo would appear. You know, same thing with the wings. You know, you, you, you guys get the idea. And then you press uh, Control D to unselect all that. And I've included some references. Um, this from LooktaffeArchive.de. You can see the different camo combinations that were in the, this period that were used on aircraft. Most of these right here you can tell already were night fighters. And most likely they're going to be BF-110s or FW-198s. Um, what else? JU-88C6s maybe? No, not C6. There's an 88 that's a night fighter too, but I forget the designation for it. And then we have, of course, the 190s. You know, this is like a 190A series, I believe. That's going to be your A's. This will be like your 190D, maybe. Or maybe that one. I don't know. This one seems like it's more like the 109. This is, seems more like it's the 190. Um, and there are other combinations to that too. So. Here you got the bomber, transports, uh, recon, I assume. That's what. I'll, off Clara, is, I can't say it, man. Uh, sorry if, if I butchered it, German people. So let's uh, 
just mumbled the word German. And then we got more RLM colors that I got this in here mainly just to give you a reference for you to have the names of the colors. So if you create your own, uh, you'll know what to call it. Um, in the late war, it didn't really, it, the planes weren't in cookie cutter uh, factory, you know, produced aircraft where all the colors were exactly the same, the same mixture, same reflectivity, all that. Late war, the, the camera was like field applied from what I hear or what I read. Actually, you don't hear anything online, you read it. And it was really up to the guy mixing it. You know, I'm sure he knows what RLM 72 is supposed to look like, but. You know, he just mixes what he has together to get that get that effect. Um, I think I read that on the uh, Luftwaffe Expert Tim message board, which I'm still a part of and I can still access. So if you guys get any questions, I can go in there and look for things. It's it's a a wealth of information if you're familiar with it. And moving on down into the reference area, I I put this image in here so you can see how to color your defense bands that I've also included in here. Uh, for you to use uh, these guys, I, I think um, by this time these were either 262s or maybe G10s, K4s, G14s. This is the only one, the KGJ27, that I found that's on a model airplane that has the checkers. And I don't know if the guy's correct or not. Uh, actually, I think I have a photo of it too. But anyway, these guys are obviously 262s. You're not going to put that on the D9, but you can if you want to. I made it possible. I made all of these possible for you. And then we got the the well-known image that everybody's seen everywhere. If you've been if you've been in the skin game for a while, then you've already seen this. I happen to have uh, the Holy Grail, the uh, Merrick book. I think it's this one that I have, or maybe it's that one, but I have it on PDF. Um, yeah, so that, that that book's got a lot of info. And there's a volume two that's not as good, uh, but it has more stuff in it. Oh, these dogs are killing me, dude. Here are the effects is self-explanatory. I grouped them all together so that way you can just quickly turn them off when you're trying to, like, sample a color you use, or you can just sample my colors, you know, so it, there's nothing in the way. Um, or you just want to see something a little clearer. And down here at the markings, Let's expand this IRM. So here, okay, service markings. These are all, uh, oh, these are also his too. That's just like, you know, the hair off holding, you know, for the jack stand, you know, the other parts like the machine gun service and all that stuff like that. Um, national insignia, self-explanatory. That's the uh, Balkan crates and Hawking crates. And right now, since I was just experimenting with the JV44, I know it's not black on the numbers. Don't worry, we're going to get to that. Um, I have this one turned on, and then I, here I included the full Hawking crews, and of course you got the ones that I didn't even really touch these either because he did a good job making those, or they're they're pretty correct in in, in the position. Um, here, if you put a defense banner, you're making a JG27 or a KGJ27 skin pack. All you got to do is find the uh, parts that are colored here, and just control click them. If you're gonna make another unit like Oh, that's the bottom one. Sorry, that's why you couldn't see it. So you just want to find a blue. Um, it's probably not United States blue, but I think this is close enough to the actual blue. From ju judging from the uh, ME262 pictures I've seen, the blue is actually pretty dark. So that'd probably be KGJ64 or 54. And then you just Control Z, Control Z. And that's how you use that. You just color those parts of it, and your checkers will come out. And then the white, if you don't want a white, say you want to make a black and yellow one, you're making a historically plausible, you know, unit for your squadron. You could do that, too. Um, turning off that one. Turning on the tri-color. This is also tri and single, so if you want to just make it a single, you just turn that off, and then control-click, and then change your color. Like, if you want to make JG1, you'd control-click it and paint it red. Uh, the red I'm using on the JV44 as sample from a real color photo that I don't think the photographer used a filter on. Uh, that's the part where you get in trouble. Uh, you can have a color photo of an aircraft, and people can argue back and forth all day, but it really depends on who the photographer was, what type of lens he was using, if he's using a filter, and the developing solution which he used. If he used the uh, silver nitrate, I believe, Yellow is turned black in uh, black and white photos, which also gives us a good indication that something was 
RLM27 or RLM04. So that's a good way to, to find things out. I learned that by looking up the uh, EGR54 unit, the ones that have the emblem of the little Viking ship. Um, that was tough to find, man, but I found it. I made a skin pack. It's actually in the, uh, I want to say the 109 F2 or F4 skin thread. You can still find them. I also made an entire like JG51 pack. Um, I made all that too. I, there's quite a few, of my, quite a number of things that I made are floating around out there, but they're all 2K except for a few. So I'll have to update those. And then we got this one, which where it has the bands that are parallel to each other. I know you've seen that one, and you've also seen the one where it's not. It's like vertical right on the uh, jack stand hole. And uh, the white part is always the uh, the plug. It's an 18-inch plug that they engineered very quickly in the war to add length to the tail. Because I believe the early D9s were... I mean, when they were testing them, they weren't that stable because the engine, the nose got longer. So when you add length to the front, you got to add length to the rear, too. I learned that at Boeing also. We have our 787-89 and 10s. Uh, we have we have the, the same thing. We have plugs. If we add one to the front, we're adding one to the back, only it's not as long. So the front, you figure on this plane, they had the uh, BMW. It probably cut off about there, and they added like four feet to the nose. So... Here they added about a foot and a half. I don't know how that much that is in meters or centimeters. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a stupid American. But anyway, that's what it is. That's all that extension is. If you look on the plane model, it's like rounded, and then it gets straight, and then it, and it continues to curve again. It's like they chopped it and then extended it, which is basically what they did. Um, how they put that on, I don't know. I assume maybe they took these these off and bolted it with four big lag bolts or something. You know, something that can handle a lot of G-force. And these here, they're not on. They're at the bottom and the top there. These are, uh, they're called stiffeners, and they were put on the D9, just a little history, to counteract the massive torque of the UMO 213F that was in here. They put a bomber engine in this thing. So this is a very fast airplane. I mean, in real life, I'm sure it was. And the, the game kind of seems more fantasy <laughs> as far as the speed and handling goes in this thing. I've done numerous tests, you know, I'm, I'm not blacking out at all. I'm able to turn super tight at high speeds and never black out, you know, against my buddies online. And we all came to the same conclusion. I think that this one, I don't know. I, I have I, I have suspicions about the handling. I love the plane, don't get me wrong. I'm just, I think a lot of players know this. That's why they use it. If it didn't do that, they wouldn't use it. They use the next best plane, the plane that exploits speed and physics and just relativity all in general. Uh, sorry, that's my little rant. I'll stop talking, you know. And then, uh, yeah, you just turn them off for JV44 because they just didn't have those. They had this, the big giant, you know, which I thought was pretty cool looking. I think it would be better if it was white and then red stripes because then it would be like, you know, candy stripers, you know, like a candy cane, you know. So I just said, you know, twice, didn't I? So let's close this IRM. Let's open up the part details. That's all the ones that uh, ICDP put. I just left that alone because that was fine too. Could I make my own? Yeah, I most certainly could. I definitely could make my own. Um, now we're going to go to the uh, Yadstaffel and the number and work. I think that's how the Germans actually say it. If I'm wrong, then correct me, German, if you're out there. Any German. Sorry for butchering your language. <laughs> uh, here, so this is what I'm getting at. So the work number... They have those up there. Say you wanted to make another six digit, you just double click on the T and see how it highlights there, uh, right here at the bottom. You just type in a number like uh, 500434 oh, or something like that. And and there you go, it's changed. You know, but what you do to one, you gotta do to the other. So uh, 500434, oh, whoa, back up. That's the actual side number, but you can change the side numbers too. Change that to 13. Then we'll go to the uh, work number port. That's the, okay, here we go. That's the port side. Now you just type in 500434. Now those will always stay black. These, since we all know JV44 has red letters, you just, you just double click it and then click your red. It changes. Uh, double click this one. Oh, someone already made a comment. I'm pretty sure they got a question that I can most likely answer for them. 
All right, and then it's red now. Uh, Bond Shrift is the closest font I can find. I know the one that's out there, the Flugzug, uh, something, I forgot what it was called. There's one out there, but that font doesn't work with Windows 10, or at least it doesn't work with my computer. It gives me weird results. So I'm going to have to remake that entire font pack. And I'll make a, I'll make one where the letters are not outlined, and then I'll alternate where the letters have the stroke on them. So you just hold down Alt when you type to get that. And then in Photoshop, you just select the color that's between the, uh, the outline, which is always going to be white, and then select Similar, and then just paint the inside of that, and then Control-D out of it. And that's how you get around doing that. But I haven't done that yet. I just want to get the skin pack out to you guys. So anyway, that's how you change that. And then down here, of course, is the, the meat and potatoes. Um, I use the RLM76B as a base, or AKA RLM99. Um, so that way I can paint RLM76 over spray and the rudders over, you know, just based on some model airplanes I've seen. I, I wasn't around in World War II, and there's not a lot of color photos of these. And any ones that do exist, the paint is just like haphazardly, like just thrown on there and brushed on just to give some appearance of camo. Uh, here, the RLM02 gray, the gray parts. And then, you know, I got different camo schemes. So right now I have this one on, the 8183-76B76. So this is how you get, how you use this uh, template. So say you painted everything like you, you know, got your green and you, you got your pattern the way you feel it's correct. And again, this is your skin. You, know, you could do it however you want. I made this so that way your pattern is independent of your color, just like ICDP did. So all you would have to do is just control click the main color, make another layer above and call it your pattern. And then you just paint your pattern in the parts where the fuel solage is and the wings and all that. Or if you just want to affect the wings, you go back up to reference and alignment and you control click just the wings so you can affect only that part. So let's say we're, we're happy with what we got. So let's control D that. Let's hover on the, on the group and we're going to control C for copy. Okay, we're going to collapse it so we know we're not doing that. I'm going to turn it off. We're going to put it right underneath the late war details just in case we're using them. But I'm going to actually I'll turn them back on because there's something under that's going to affect the skin. You press Shift Control V and there. So we said we were happy. So we're going to a click and then Control click, right click. And then go merge layers. And this is what you do. I'm just going to use the eraser tool just for, for giggles right now. Let's make sure. Let's go like uh, 31. I don't know. Man. And you just erase away what you do, what you need. So say your, your line's right there. If you want to keep that line, it's okay. You just kind of start there. Just kind of drag it up. Oh, it says brush, but I don't want to use that. Oh, I have the opacity turned way down. So let's bring that back up to 100. I'm sorry, guys. I didn't know what I was doing. Just kind of, you know, erase away. And just know this is the air horn right here. This is the bottom part of it. So when you erase there, you got to do the air horn too. And you just kind of just, you know, go along. You can bring it up so that the number can show better. Do that. You can bring it. And sometimes the whole tail behind the uh, the defense band is RLM 76, but sometimes it's not, and they leave a little bit of a, a kind of a stripe on the on the top, and they just bring it in like that. And that's all you do. You just erase away everything you need to erase. I'm just going to do one side. I'm not going to do the whole thing, guys. That way, you know, you're not getting just a race away on the horn. Looks like we got exactly half of it. So I think my my blur is a little too much for the scale that I'm, I'm using. So I might want to turn the hardness down to like 10% or 15%. So, okay, we're, we're happy with uh, what we got color-wise. So now that you've done it here, 
you also have to do the same thing in the alpha. But luckily, the only thing we have to affect are the numbers. Uh, this I've already done for you in the alpha. So the the red paint's really glossy in the picture that I have. I don't know about the white. I think the white they may have used the white for the uh, the markings. So I think my white's a little bright. So you know you can turn it down if you want to. Uh, if you don't like my red, I have that separated from the stripes, by the way. So if you don't like my color red, you can use the red that you like. Uh, I'm just using this because I got it from a photo that I believe no filters were used on because it doesn't have a yellow hue or a green hue. And when I did the, uh, you can go to image right here, go to uh, auto color, it didn't really change that much. You'll know if it changes a whole a whole bunch, that means that guy used a filter. But again, this could be wrong too. So anyway, moving along, let's go to the alpha. So we did number 13 and we did 500434. So let's go here. Let's go to the add sample first. 500434 and then port. Double click on that. 500434. And we'll do the number starboard. And that's a one three. Double click on that one and three. The markings are already alpha for you, if lack, of, lack of a better term. You know, I got the red, it's kind of reflective. And that's pretty much it. Um, I have the full Hawking Cruise on mine. Uh, generally, the, I should have left this one as dull, because generally these appear darker than the crosses. The crosses could just be heavily worn. They just reapplied the... The Nazi symbol, which I kind of, I mean, I, I get that was the symbol, but that's a political symbol. They should have just stayed with the, uh, like they could have made the white tails with the black cross on, you know what I mean? The, the tall black cross in World War I. Uh, that, to me, would have looked way better than, you know, but you had a, you know, a megalomaniac. I just wanted everybody, you know, that's, that's neither here nor I personally would like a white tail with the you know, cross, which something you could, you could do on your own if you want to. I think that would have looked, or like a Luftwaffe plane, and then maybe get rid of the cross here and put put a big number there, and just keep the ones on the bottom. And get rid of the ones on the top, so that way, because the the white on the top kind of detracts from the camo scheme. Um, really, that's all you got to do, and you can change if you hold this layer and say you want it to be much much duller than that. You just go to adjustments and you go to uh, where is it at levels. And you can see a preview, you just kind of drag it, make it, you know, more reflective or a whole lot less reflective. That's like super, super matte, like zero. But paint, even matte paint, in this case, they use satin. Satin has a little bit of a shine to it, just a little tiny bit, not much, just enough to keep it from being full matte. And if you see photos of uh, Luftwaffe aircraft, even black and white photos, there's a real famous one where there's uh, the pilot, he's leaning on the, the uh, horizontal stabilizer, and you can see his reflection in the paint at a certain angle. Like, you wouldn't see it directly on. It's just when you, like, if you kneel down and put your eye level or close to it, um, you can see that. But, like, like, like if you go to your... Your kitchen table, say you have a wood table that's varnished. If you look directly on it, you probably won't see much of your reflection at all. But if you like kneel down and put your eyes like just almost a little bit above, you see all kinds of reflection. So that's what new games use. They use PBR, which is physically based um, something rendering, where it renders just like the real physical material. This game doesn't use that, but you know if it did, it would make skinning a little harder, but not too much. Because then you got to understand how PBR works, too. And then you'd probably need something like Substance Painter to make skins for everybody. <laughs> That's going to be a pain in the ass, because I don't know how to use that program yet. And, yeah, so anyway, sorry, moving along. That That's that's what you do, but let's change the marking to match our... Um, so we have that one. So I'll just I'll just leave that dull, dull for now. Just, just to... Good to get it on there. Okay, so we're happy with our alpha, right? We're totally happy. 
So we're done with it. So this is the part that you have to do now that you didn't have to before is you have to right click on any of the exposed layers that are not in a group or what I call the IRM, the installation requirements, requirements module. Right click on it and go flatten image. Then press V, make sure you get the selection tool on. Unlock it, control click, and now you see the marching ants and you see the scissors. So control C. Go back to your color one. Let's uh, collapse everything. Go to channels and delete whatever alpha you have there. You can't just paste over the top of it because it'll make the whole thing matte for some. I don't know why it does that, but it does. And just make a new alpha. And all you got to do is hold hold it down, hold it down, shift control V, and then control D to unselect. Go back to your colors and you, you know, press save, control S. And we'll have to wait, 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 wait. Okay, here we go. Blue bar of death is over. You have to flatten this one too. And then saving in the new NVIDIA texture tools, you go save as, you know, of course, you know, to go to DDS. So it's called the texture tools exporter. I already have my folder on quick access. So click on that. Once you click on it and press save, and it's that, you're committed to it. So you can't just back out of this thing. And then nothing happens because right now it's going to put this on there, but it'll be dull, like the whole thing. And you want to choose BC3 because that is DXT5. Uh, there is a DXT1 in here, but it doesn't work. Um, and make sure both are selected so that way when you see it transparent like this, that means you've done it right. All right, and click save. And unlike the old... The old program, you had to wait and wait and wait and wait for the DDS to save. This time it's instantaneous. So let's open up the skin viewer really quick. I'm going to make you sit here with me. Oh, we're coming up on a half an hour, so I'm going to bang this out. We'll find, find it. There we go. And now we're going to go to our test skin. And there you go. You can kind of see, you know, damn near perfect. But the, the blend mode is a little too faded. And also you can use the smudge tool and the blur tool to get like a, like it was running down a little bit effect, but you can see we got our number, which is close enough for government work. And the propellers that I, I edited, they're the same propeller, but I edited where the scratches and stuff were, so they look different. You know, when it's in it, when you're taking static shots, the back is irrelevant. You know, that one's all exactly the same. And you can see here the ailerons on top were always the brighter. Um, I want to say it's 82. I guess that's just how the factory did it. I also have alternate ailerons were on the in the skin template that you can turn on that are 182 and 176. I just saw that on a picture, like a drawing. So I just put it in there. I also included. Uh, you can see the red paint is shiny, but it's not like chrome or anything like that. That's how the aluminum is too. It's just natural metal. I don't think they polished it. I think they just made it natural and just cleaned it really good. Uh, the white is a little more matte than the red, obviously. Uh, I have, this is version two of the pinstripes where it ends right here. So if you're making red 13, uh, these are the ones you would use. If you're making anything else, I have them where they continue all the way down the plane. So you have those two. So this this whole this template should give you the means to make Virtually any unit that was a D9 unit in the game. So, uh, new skinners, I wish you luck. Uh, don't give up. You're going to make mistakes. It's going to be frustrating when you first do it. You're not going to get the result you want the first time. Just keep at it and keep going and keep going. And pretty soon you'll learn the template like the back of your hand. You'll just know where every part is. You'll know which way to turn things. It just it just happens. Once you make enough enough skins... You know, you're good, but try to focus on one aircraft. Spend like a whole month and try to do like, you know, one skin a day or one skin every couple of days. And just stick with that one plane, you know, over and over and over. See, like here I see a mistake already on the antenna. So I got to paint that green just on the top surface of it. And then bring the red underneath like that. Or maybe I'll just make it RLMO2 all the way through. And... Yep, and on the skin viewer, one more thing I'll show you. You can turn on the shadow properties and then go to your ambient light. And it starts out as uh, in the shadows, but you just turn that on and you can see. 
the light go over your aircraft. Supposed to simulate the game engine, but the skins always look better when you fire them up in the game. Uh, here, yeah, there you go. If we can turn turn it back on. You can see how red it is. It gets dark, like it's an overcast day, like the picture I have, and it gets bright again. That, that's what I want. I just wanted to make sure it got brighter than what it looked like. And you see on the camo, you can see the light going past it. It's got that little tiny, tiny bit of shine to it. Just a little tiny bit. I think that was to facilitate you know, being able to wipe it down and clean it. Because if you ever try to clean matte paint, dude, it's, it's hard. All right, guys, that's it I have for the uh, template. I hope you guys enjoy using it. And I'll see you on the flip side with my uh, JG26 skin pack that I'm going to start now. I know I was going to do it before, but I wanted to give you guys this a full, complete factory so you guys can make your own stuff or different units. All right, peace.